I was interested in kung fu as a 12 year old. I was the skinny bullied kid and I first saw Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. And as soon as I saw him on screen, knocking people down, being so tough, I wanted to be him. He became sort of one of my superheroes. I had been studying East Asian studies and religion, and so I had an interest in Lao Tzu and Zhuang Tzu and Taoism and Buddhism. And the Shaolin Temple, as well as Kung Fu, is also the birthplace of Zen Buddhism, or Chan. And so I thought this was a wonderful opportunity to study both of my two major interests at the place where it all began. The typical day of training was started at dawn. You got up at about six in the morning, you would run up to Damodon, Damo's temple, uh, cave, sorry. Uh, and then you would come down and you would work out, you'd have breakfast and then another two hours, then lunch, Took take a brief nap because we were all tired, train some more, uh, dinner, and then after dinner we would kind of relax. So the thing about the Shaolin Temple in the early 90s was there was no TV, there was no internet, there were no movies, there were no telephones, there were no girls. So all we could do was study Kung Fu all day long, and it was great. It was the best time ever. At the time, at the temple itself and the schools around it, there were several schools around in that small village in Dengfeng, uh, there were about 10,000 Chinese students. I was the only foreign student. Even though I came from so far away, and many of the monks had grown up, they'd never known a, mo a foreigner before, we were able, through our mutual love of Kung Fu, to become really good friends. The Chinese have a phrase, churku, to eat bitter. Uh, and at Shaolin, the idea was to learn Kung Fu was to eat bitter and to study lian ku. Um, and so I learned this sense of, you know, struggle is an important part of how the Chinese view advancement and how you develop character. And so I think that was one of the most important lessons. Uh, another thing I really saw was the economic development that occurred at the time. I was there in the early 90s when things were still just starting, uh, and so there was a lot of poverty. Uh, and then I went back 10 years later and saw the incredible economic advancements and how it changed people's perspective, and so that was really powerful. And with China, I was really interested in the culture itself, but using Kung Fu as sort of the avenue to explore it. Bruce Lee is one of the most fascinating figures in human history, I think. He's certainly the most famous Asian American to ever live. He grew up in Hong Kong, uh, came to America when he was 18, but he got famous when he returned to Hong Kong to make his movies. And so I think he represents um, the first time the Chinese actor ever got to play the hero in Hollywood movies. And I think that's why he's most important, is that he demonstrated a strong muscular China to the West and he also introduced more Westerners to Kung Fu and Asian culture than any other person to ever live. I got to interview his widow Linda, his daughter Shannon, his sister Phoebe, um, his boss at uh, Golden Harvest uh, Raymond Chow. Uh, so I interviewed over a hundred people who knew Bruce Lee, friends, families, colleagues. Well, certainly I interviewed Betty Ting Pei, who uh, Bruce Lee died in her bed. The interview took 13 hours and during part of it she did some Buddhist chants uh, from memory and so that was quite memorable. Another person I interviewed was Sharon Farrell who uh, had an affair with Bruce Lee. Um, but at the same time she was also having an affair with Steve McQueen uh, and Bruce and Steve, Bruce was Steve McQueen's martial arts instructor and so there was a bit of a love triangle between them and it reminded me a little of high school like the captain of the football team and the new kid at school both liked the same girl uh, and so it gave me a sense of the rivalry that Bruce Lee had with Steve McQueen who at the time was like Tom Cruise, he was the biggest box office star in the world. I think a lot of people think of him primarily as a martial artist who accidentally made some movies. And the reason is they only watched the last four movies he made in Hong Kong, which are all kung fu movies. But the truth is he was an actor long before he was a martial artist. His father was an actor. Bruce Lee appeared before his first, on his first film when he was two months old. And before he was 18 he had made 20 
uh, movies. None of those were kung fu movies. He was sort of the Macaulay Culkin of, of Hong Kong. He, made, he played orphans and street urchins. And so he really was an actor who fell in love with the martial arts and then merged those two passions. Before Bruce Lee, there were maybe 10,000 Americans studying martial arts, and, and since then, there are now 20 million. And so you could think of him almost like a missionary. He converted millions and millions of Westerners to study the art of martial arts or Kung Fu. And uh, what I often say is that Kung Fu isn't just a physical defense form, it's also a spiritual practice. So you really can think of Bruce Lee as a kind of missionary figure.